This is Cashflow Ninja, episode 13 with Jay Massey. Welcome to the Cashflow Ninja, the podcast empowering and inspiring people to discover how to generate their own income and manage, grow, and protect their own wealth in the new economy. Now, here is your host, MC Laubscher. Hello everyone, MC Lobster here, and thank you for spending some time with me today. I have quite a show for you today. I think you're going to be really inspired by today's show, and you might feel after listening to today's show that you really don't have any excuses to get started and create the life that you're dreaming of, creating multiple income streams and cash flow from something that you're passionate about. This is how I felt the first time I came across the guest of our show today. So no matter where you are in life right now, what situation you might find yourself in, you have to realize that we have one life to live and we have the capability to do amazing things with our lives and truly living a life that inspires you and people around you, creating as much value as you can for others. The only thing standing between us and our ideal life that we envision is the story we keep telling ourselves, that little voice in our heads and our limiting beliefs. Bruce Lee was quoted as saying, to hell with circumstances, I create opportunities. And my guest today is a fantastic example of living the statement. My guest today is Jay Massey. Jay wasn't always the real estate investor he is today. The road to success was paved with challenges that Jay had to overcome. He literally went from having zero squatting in bank-owned property to owning more than 300 units of property across several states. Today, Jay is an investor, a published author, speaker, educator, podcast host, entrepreneur, and business owner. His brand cash flow diary is gaining global recognition. Jay's belief is if change is truly desired, including a change in financial position, it's imperative to take action. If anyone is struggling and worried about having to change his or her life picture, it starts with changing your mindset. If you truly want that vision of your life to come into being, you must allow the change to begin in your mind. Stop listening to those who tell you what cannot be done and just go for it. That means every day and every night, there's one mindset of keeping one's eye on the prize. Now, before we jump into our interview with Jay, I just want to thank our sponsors, Audible. Download any book for free when you try Audible for 30 days. You can grab a free trial and audiobook download at cashflowninja.com forward slash free book download and also thrive15.com. Thrive15.com provides 15-minute lessons on every aspect of business from marketing and branding to bookkeeping from world-class mentors. You can get a free month of access and learn new skills daily for just 15 minutes a day at thrive15.com forward slash cashflow. Just a reminder, you can find all of our show notes and past podcasts at CashflowNinja.com. You can also join our community and mailing list by texting the word CashflowNinja, one word, all capitalized, to 44222. That's two fours and three twos. Community members in our mailing list will get weekly shows sent directly to the inbox, along with other valuable resources and information. If there's any way that I can provide more value for you and serve you better, please email me at info at cashflowninja.com or go to cashflowninja.com forward slash contact and send me an email through our contact form or leave a message on our SpeakPipe voicemail. Hey, this is John Lee Dumas from Entrepreneur on Fire, and you're listening to the Cashflow Ninja podcast with your host, MC Lobsher. You must be prepared to ignite. Well, Jay, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. You have quite an amazing and inspiring story. Can you please share a little bit about your background and your remarkable story with my audience? Yeah, certainly. Uh, One of the things I would like to say first, though, is no matter what you hear, just understand that nobody starts that way. Every master was once a disaster. I mean, it, it and it wasn't like 
I've got some special gift or innate talent that you cannot develop. Um, my wife and I, a few years ago, we were you know, squatting a bank on property. She has a condition known as hyperemesis. What that means is that uh, she can't eat or drink when pregnant. And I went to go blow off steam. So I went to play volleyball, punctured my lung. I ended up in a situation to where I couldn't walk and talk at the same time. She couldn't eat or drink. I couldn't walk or talk. And needless to say, there was no money coming in. And that that was the beginning of looking for a different way to create value in the marketplace and earn an income. A friend said, um, you should become a real estate investor, which at the time didn't make any sense because our credit score was 398. We barely had $75 to put together. And I mean, we were making decisions, electricity or food. We were selling our personal possessions on eBay. None of that seemed to add up. In fact, when you examine my pedigree, there's nothing in my background that says that I should be doing what I get the privilege of doing today and serving who I get to serve today. But the past doesn't matter. What matters is that we had a problem. Uh, we needed a source of income. And it turned out that the same strategies I was using on eBay to sell our personal possessions worked in real estate. And that was the beginning of our ability to go out there and uh, find our own way to recover and create more value in the marketplace. Yeah, and that ties into my, my next question about how you guys started from that position and started to slowly build some income. Can you uh, get into a little bit deeper about your strategies that you employed on eBay? Yeah, certainly. Uh, well, it's pretty funny because I, all I did at the beginning is I was just trying to sell anything that we had in the garage. But obviously, after a while, you run out of your own stuff. But this is also how I know every American has at least $3,000 worth of stuff in their garage right now, at least at a minimum. And at least. <laughs> right. Some of you, you know you got more. Your car hasn't been in there in a while, so it's probably even more. But here, right. here's what I learned is um, at a garage sale, people sell stuff for cheap and quick. I'm like, okay, cool. They just want the cash. They're, they're ready to get it done. So what I started doing is I started keying in on certain like certain items that would sell resale on eBay really, really fast. One of these items, just to give everybody some context, is Disney memorabilia, Disney memorabilia. So collector plates and little trinkets, anything with Disney slapped on it would sell on eBay really, really fast and quickly. And the, the more odd and weird or harder to find, the better which is the best place to go find stuff at a garage sale because they would have <laughs> odd, weird stuff. You're like, yeah. it's stuff you would never have an interest in otherwise, but that's what I did. So I took those uh, plates and people would sell, you know, these plates with Disney stuff, uh, you know, on it, like one plate, a, a plate, a dollar, you know, five plates, uh, $10 or whatever. They'd have a deal on plates. I take those plates. All I, I kid you not, I clean them up present them better, put them on eBay, i.e. expose them to a wider audience. And then I would be able to sell and resell that same plate that I would buy earlier that day for 19, 20, 25 dollars, etc. Same plate. All I did was right. clean it up, take some photos, put it on eBay. And while, yeah, you, if you do the math, you're like, wow, that's a really great margin. It is, but it's a whole lot of work. <laughs> and when you're trying to hit, you know, thousands of dollars a month like this, you, it taxes you. You can't, you cannot sustain that without systems and all these other things. But in essence, all I was doing was buying something of value at a price that the person agreed, said, hey, this is what I'm willing to sell it for. And I resold that same something to someone else who was willing to pay more. And I created value because I was the bridge between those two individuals because they would have never met otherwise. And that's what it turns out that wholesaling is. That's exactly the first strategy I did. We did, for, I don't know, well over 200 transactions that way, typically earning between $2,000 to $26,000 per transaction uh, takes about 72 hours, that type of thing. So right. and that's how it started, you know, for me. Now, for those out there that's not familiar with wholesaling, can you just give a little overview of what wholesaling is? Sure. It's the same thing I just said about the Disney plate, except instead of a Disney plate at a discount, you buy a property. <laughs> Everything right. else is the same. You go find someone who doesn't want the property they currently have. It's probably being marketed bad. Uh, they, it could be in bad condition. They could just be in distress. 
Maybe there's, you know, death, divorce, some form of destruction is going on in their life. And the thing that they've decided is if I can get rid of this house, my life would be better. You find that person. They're in every marketplace, every country. I've done this now internationally and I've seen it. It's them. Here's the point. Right. There's also a person who looking for a place to stay in the same marketplace. The difference is both people don't know each other (laughs) and you get to be that middle person who knows each other. That's the value you get paid for. So if you've ever said, hey, I'm a great connector, if your friends call you a great connector, this is totally up your alley. Okay, if you like wheeling and dealing and negotiating, this is totally up your alley. All you're really doing is building two lists of people, one list of people who have something that they don't want. And a, another list of people who don't have something uh, that they do want. And you match those two individuals up. And when that happens, you get paid. Now, I'm a big fan of your podcast, Cashflow Diary. And Thanks. one of your shows taught a fantastic lesson about understanding who you served, oh. regardless of what business you're in. I, that was so powerful. And I learned a lot from that. Because when you understand who you serve, you can creatively find more ways to add value to those who you serve. I believe you use an example of a Nordstrom Target at Walmart. Can you explain that to my audience? Yeah, yeah, certainly, certainly. And that's it's one of it's one of the most profitable things you can do. And it's also one of my biggest pet peeves because real estate people think they don't have to do it. <laughs> it's like, right. come on. Why not? Uh, because it, it all business starts with your customer, period. No customer, no business. Period. Right. Yeah, you got a great shiny business plan, but you don't know who you a business plan at best is who you think is going to buy and use your product in the ways that you are guessing. And this is what you hope they're going to pay. Maybe, <laughs> you know, that that's right. the best you got. But when you start thinking about your customer, it becomes different. You can come up with products and services and all the things that somebody could actually use and need in a completely different way. So the example that I like to use, again, using three retail stores in the United States is Walmart, Target, and Nordstrom. They all sell, all three of those stores sell something very similar. Uh, Let's just go with shirts. Now, I'm not telling you to go buy your shirts at Nordstrom, Walmart, Target. I I don't really care where you buy your shirts. Let's just remember that all three stores sell shirts, okay? And when Walmart, Target, or Nordstrom sells a shirt, each one makes money. So it's not about money because that's the second trap that business owners or or would-be entrepreneurs fall into. Well, which one's going to make me the most money? That's not it. Okay, it's that that's just not it. You know, it people need a shirt. (laughs) Okay, and then it comes down to if it's not about money, it comes down to really which headache you want to deal with. Uh, You know, because there's a it's completely different demographic. In each of those stores, so when Target, Walmart, or Nordstrom sells a shirt, they're serving a different demographic of customer. And based upon that, the customer has certain expectations. They're expecting to pay a certain price. They're expecting a certain level of service. They're expecting you know, customer service returns and certain things like that to work a certain way because that's what they are. That is the brand promise from each of those stores. And when you follow through successfully in understanding that, it suddenly becomes clearer why you don't need to put granite countertops in certain neighborhoods. It, it gets clearer why certain property managers, you know, the, the, the classic example is you bought a house very, very inexpensive. You hire a property manager and you feel like you're always, always, always repairing it. And you may be because the property manager is more Nordstrom, OK, is more Nordstrom right. and not 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 Walmart. They don't know how to manage yeah, I mean, they think that you need an accent wall in every unit. No, you don't. Certain <laughs> customers don't expect an accent wall or a pool. It's not mandatory. You don't have to have, you know, a perfectly manicured garden or garden and lawn with, you know, shapes in the trees. It doesn't it doesn't have to be that way in certain neighborhoods. Other neighborhoods, it's absolutely mandatory. Like in a Nordstrom neighborhood, you're you're not going to get away. Yeah, you better have a tennis court, better be clean. I mean, all all kinds of different expectations. You and I as real estate entrepreneurs, anybody as business owners, forgetting this is, you know, the death of your business. Forgetting that basic lesson is the death of your business. And if more people approached real estate from that perspective, they would have more success. 
Yeah, I believe you shared an example of adding pets to a property just to enhance the value and change, again, oh. serving a different set of owners. I think that's a great example. Can you share that one? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. And, and I still have yet to find anybody. I, so I'd love to do this. Maybe somebody's going to take me up on this <laughs> because it, I think it's the, it is one of the biggest. There are two big classes of in, uh, renters that are typically highly underserved. Um, one is pet owners. And the other is uh, the physically disabled. You take either one. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, senior living. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about physically disabled. You take either one of those two classes and, you know, you begin to customize. Someone taking a 10 unit building, 20 unit building, uh, you know, garden low rise style. And you customize that entire building and you make it pet friendly. Like you add dog runs, that becomes the extra thing you do inside of the the space you have. You add a dog run to your to the to the landscape because you've got the room. You do that, and you can charge more because you're now customizing the the experience. Pet owners, if not if they're nothing else, they are irrational. Period <laughs> about Fluffy and Fido. And they oh, yes. do whatever they've got to do to have <laughs> Fluffy and Fido be there. Even if it means I got to pay extra money, but I can have this for my dog. Yes, absolutely. Because we think it, of it as a negative. Oh, the dog's going to tear down the house and, and the cat's going to this, that and the other. Well, the cat's going to, I mean, your house isn't going to last forever anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> you might as well get paid for it. Okay. And that's really what I'm trying to say. You can charge more when you specialize and your marketing cost becomes less because you become the one landlord in the entire area that caters towards pet owners. So while all the other landlords are saying, no, we don't take pets. No, we don't take pets. And it's not a part of their brand because it's a weird conversation. And I've been present when these conversations happen. You've got a great tenant there. Everything looks good. They're feeling nervous, though, because they know they haven't brought up the fact they got, you know, they got Fluffy. And Fluffy want, they know they want to take them. And they're, they're scared to even bring it up. Because they don't want you to say no because they like your house. They're just afraid you're going to say no because you, they have a cat. And <laughs> then they say you because most landlords, do you have a pet? Yeah. No, sorry. Can't help you. Done. Right. End the story. And I'm telling you, there's such an opportunity just right there. And I can't I mean, I can't buy everything. People come on. Somebody pick this up. Run with it. And I'm telling you, you you'll totally kill it. Fantastic. Well, there's a great business idea right there. No, it's so true. In my experience, too, just in property management, you tell folks that you're going to bundle, you know, internet and cable, or right. you're going to add a gym and charge them more, and they go, no way, but put a loop for Fluffy to run on after hours. Absolutely. A hundred yeah. Not only, not only they, they, in fact, they're, they, they'll start coming up with new services. Can we have a birthday party in the general area that she can invite all of her other doggy friends to? I mean, I'm telling you, it, it would become something completely different. Now, let's talk about real estate as an asset class. Can you talk about sure. some of the other advantages why you chose to be in the real estate business? I, well, let's be clear. I didn't really chose real estate. I was looking for a way to earn income without having to physically work, not because I was lazy, but because I couldn't work. <laughs> That's what right. I was hoping for. So if spoons had the same benefit as real estate, we'd be talking about spoons right now. <laughs> okay. That's right. Some more <laughs> spoons on eBay. <laughs> there you go. If, if they had the same benefits, that's what we'd be talking about. So what it right. comes down to is that real estate, uh, real estate's a package of benefits. Honestly, it's a package of benefits that allows certain things from a lifestyle standpoint uh, that I wanted and I think many people want. Plus, and here's the here's the thing. This is the trump card. This is the thing that makes real estate completely drop dead. This is why it's so valuable everywhere. It simply has POC. What I mean by that is proof of concept. If I invent a new widget, a new product, a new a new type of phone, a new selfie stick, a new keyboard, a new whatever, I've got to prove the market. I've got to prove that people are going to be willing to buy and that enough of them are going to be willing to buy it to make a sustainable, viable business. 
That's what I got to prove. If I come up with a new social media platform, I got to prove I can get enough users and people to pay for. I got to prove all of these things. Well, here's the interesting thing. Have you noticed, MC, that no one ever wonders if somebody is going to live in or on a piece of real estate? There's there's no doubt. You're like, yeah, of course, people live in houses. (laughs) Duh. And therefore, your access to capital your access to other people's resources beyond capital, like their knowledge, their time, uh, their blood, sweat, and tears even, is cheaper inside of real estate and easier to do than any other business, period. It's the the only place where newbies have a real, real level playing field in the terms of a chance of attracting capital because everybody gets it. People live in buildings. It's, It's not that complicated. In fact, Real estate affects where we live, work, play, or lay. Obviously, where we live, many of you, when you go to work, it's usually in or on real estate. When you go to play, you don't think about this. I do, because uh, uh, when you go to the to the fair or to you know Disney World or an amusement park, that's real estate. That's a real estate play. Uh, there was a time not long ago the Orange County Fairgrounds were up for sale, and I was like, hmm, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's a real estate right. play, right? You don't think about it, but it's there. And then no one you can't you can't say, well, I opt out of real estate. You can't opt out because the last one, like I said, live, work, play or lay you. We are all eventually laid to rest when it's all said and done. You're dealing with real estate one way or the other. Okay, so there's value in all phases of life all the time, every day. And we have proof of concept. I mean, that's that's why it's been around for so long. And, and it's so powerful for so many. Fantastic. And I just want to hammer on one thing you said in the beginning of answering that question, too, is the focus isn't on just the product and the vehicle, but it's the strategy and the systems and the processes that you have. I find that a lot of people, you know, see this shiny little new product and, you know, we're like a fish in a fishbowl and jump from one thing to another, you know, constantly. But the, you, your emphasis on the strategy and the system and the processes that entails this and that's why you chose it jay what's the best advice you ever received and the biggest lessons that you learned on your entrepreneurial journey and investing journey uh best advice is easy that one was say less to more people (laughs) i was uh, i was prospecting or at least what i thought i was prospecting now if you can imagine you're talking to someone who you're trying to get involved with what you're doing and their response first of all Sometimes if you've ever tried this, you're like just excited that somebody stopped to listen and let you talk. So and then you you end up talking and talking and talking. And that's kind of what I was doing. And at the end, he's like, do you actually want to get good at this? Do you actually want to make sales? And I was like, yes. And now, mind you, this is the guy I'm talking to who I'm hoping was going to be a customer. He's like, do you actually want to be good at it? I'm like, yes. And then he goes, you need to learn to say less to more people. And that was the end of the conversation. I'm like, awesome. I have not forgotten that. And then um, the the lessons that I have learned, I mean, are are many and varied, uh, but probably the most important one, the one that I would encourage people to do and duplicate and imitate is to fail fast, fail forward and fail frequently. Failure or learning how to fail is actually a skill that is not taught unless you're typically an athlete or an artist. Athletes and artists typically know how to fail properly and can usually persevere through. The rest of us, kindergarten through 12th grade, if you went to college and all that extra stuff, you did not learn how to fail properly. Not at all. Not at all. Right. And that's the biggest thing holding most people back from getting started or taking those risks, et cetera, is their, their fear that we're addicted to looking good. And there are two things you can't do. You can't learn and look good at the same time. Now, one habit I've observed from wealthy and successful people is that they're always studying new subjects and learning new skills. What are you currently studying and what skill sets are you currently learning? (laughs) Man, you must, you know me or something. Uh, Yes, that, (laughs) uh, well, and that's the thing. You you must continually learn uh, to, to stay abreast of how do you get your marketing message out there? How do you stay relevant? How do you keep attracting customers? I am right now uh, deep, deep into 
understanding all about this live streaming of video from your phones and 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 all of these platforms so i am constantly on periscope uh right now uh, all the time trying to figure out the best ways and and how to use it and creating more content and value for people uh because i want to create more entrepreneurs that's the thing that i'm really really excited about uh we've been able to touch entrepreneurs now or i should say cashflow diary has been able to touch entrepreneurs now in 76 different countries uh we've helped thousands of them uh now and uh, many 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 uh i would even say hundreds many hundreds actually buy their first properties buy their next properties with the students have raised millions upon millions of dollars in euros <laughs> now it it's yeah it's like i'm having to think in multiple uh currencies and in political situations because that's just where our student population is growing which is kind of exciting and it, it, just watching this this happen, and I, one of the things that uh, Blair Singer, one of the Rich Dad advisors, told me when we were backstage one time was, "Jay, you've got to focus on getting yourself and a, a, you to more people, a one to many strategy." So these platforms like Periscope, for example, have allowed me to do that in a way that I enjoy because I can be direct and help people and give them clear, concise direction on what they need to do in order to put an extra thousand dollars in their pocket or in order to change their life, you know, at the end of the day is what we're talking about. It, 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 it's not, you know, philosophical theory. It's like, here, right. go do this. So I get excited when I run into a platform that allows me to do that bigger, better, faster, more and more. And you know, Periscope has been the thing that I'm learning uh, uh, the most about how to do mobile video, live stream it, do it consistently, because uh, it's it's a different animal than many other mediums. Right. And just to learn one of those platforms, I mean, I, I'm just trying to come, get, learn Instagram right now because that's where my f- main focus is at and a little right. bit of Twitter. And, and just to... Uh, get the understanding and uh, master one of those platforms is a lot. So it's, it's really key just to focus on the one. Well, you all, well, that's how you learn everything. Uh, focus. Yeah. All of one course is so successful. You, you're going there you to go. learn. That's how we learned everything. I mean, right. Uh, and it's a, the good thing is, is that the, the compounding skills, that's really what you want. For example, you learned to talk a long, long time ago because you learned to talk. You can do a podcast. <laughs> you know <laughs> otherwise right you know one of the prerequisite for the other so you wouldn't be able to do a podcast because you'd have to go back and learn how to talk but you you already know that part so that's good and you know you learn how to turn on a computer you learn how to type you learn how to do all of these other skills that go into hey i have a podcast in itunes ta-da and that same thing is true for every entrepreneur unfortunately we get to we get too focused on the fact of, well, what's the right tub or what's the right toilet? And do we get too operational and too much in the technician stuff to be able to make the right things work all the time? That's so true. It was the same with this podcast. You just you just got to go. You know what right. you're saying for, at the speed of instruction. Move at the speed of instruction. I mean, <laughs> yeah, move at the, how move at the speed of instruction. Out, how long did you spend trying to figure out which microphone you were supposed to get? Oh boy, I started with the one that I had, but I did do some research on a couple of others before. So <laughs> you learned in, in that process, you learned yeah. way more about sound than you ever thought was necessary. You're like, I didn't even know this. And now your world <laughs> is completely different. Every time you listen to anything, you hear completely differently. Not because you right. wanted to learn about sound, it was necessary for the goal. The goal right. was to spread your message, and you're like, well, I could do it with the iTunes, and you didn't really care what it took, all of those intermediate steps, and those are the things that entrepreneurs get focused on. Entrepreneurs get focused on all of those intermediate steps and like, oh, my God, I'm never going to get through this process. You stayed focused on the ultimate goal, and that's why the podcast made it here as opposed to thinking about all the things. I mean, we're not even going to talk about audio editing because we don't want to – uh, scare anybody away who might be thinking about this, but you and That's I right. already know. What <laughs> exactly. Now, do you have any other favorite resources that, that you use on a daily basis that you would recommend to the, my listeners? An iPad Pro. I know it sounds crazy, 
But that form factor has allowed me to be that much more productive. Uh, the iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil uh, is, I mean, I can run, I can do 90% of what I do on a daily basis because of the iPad Pro, regardless of location now. Um, all I need is that internet signal. And it's not, it's not cumbersome or I'm not squinting at a smaller screen or I don't feel like I'm sacrificing much. And it's allowed me to, to be that much more productive, that much more responsive, keywords here, responsive to my team, which spans the globe. I mean, we've got people in many different countries who are responsible for certain pieces. And the timely response from me, if I miss the, their window, it could be a whole another 8, 10, 12 hours before they're back because of the time difference. But now... Right. It, that it's it's virtually a non-issue because I can always respond relatively quickly and get them the information they need. Now, Jay, a question I ask all of my guests is if you cannot pass on any money to your children and grandchildren and you are only allowed to pass on five principles and values to them to build wealth and achieve success and happiness, what would they be? That's pretty funny. You, you actually just... It, I, uh, I wasn't planning on talking about this, but that's exactly why cash flow diary exists is because it was a, I didn't want to, I had some business mentors pass away and I was like, great, they'd get, you know, some property, but what else could I really give them? And I figured right. if I documented it, the process that we went through and the things that I'd learned and the people that I had met and all this other stuff, they'd have that at a minimum to be able to go and duplicate it. And then all the students and, 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 and customers have been the test case. I figured, well, if I can teach a stranger, my kid can learn it. And if they have success, great. So it's pretty funny you say that because it's like, that's why cash flow diary, that's why it's in the format it is in. It's so that anyone right. can go and duplicate exactly what's been done, which has been, so it's exciting to say. Um, so when you asked me to think of five, it's like my brain just short circuited because I'm like, dude, it's that, that's, that's like every, it's all of cash. Flow diary. So I'm like, ah, how do I come up with just five? So I would say, uh, well, I said one earlier, fail fast, fail forward, fail frequently. That is necessary. Um, I would definitely say that, uh, learn to sell, gotta sell, learn to communicate, right. learn to lead. So let me see. That's fail. Uh, learn to sell, learn to communicate, learn to lead. So I need one more. Ah, wealth is a team sport. Wealth is a team sport uh, because no one gets there alone. And the better, more, and you need to learn how to play on a team. More importantly, be an excellent team member, which is code for saying personal development is at the center. You will not out earn your personal growth. So keep making that happen. Thank you for sharing that. And you and your wife just did a phenomenal podcast on that, actually, on how to choose oh, uh, yeah. your business team members. For our listeners, I'll put a link to Jay's episode on that, uh, on that podcast. Thanks. What books would you recommend to my audience? Well, I always have to recommend the Bible because it's what's made the biggest difference in my life. After that, uh, it would be uh, Awaken the Giant Within with Anthony Robbins, for sure. Um, right. Wallace D. Waddle's book has is uh, the science of getting rich is key and paramount for most. And then this last one, it, it's about sales, uh, and it would help a lot of people uh, if they just understood that questions are the answers. That's the title of the book. Questions are the answers uh, would be the thing because we we spend too much time trying to tell people how great we are instead of asking them what's the problem. Uh, and when we learn that questions are actually the answers that we're looking for, uh, it would help us become that much more productive. Jay, how can my audience learn more about you, the education that you offer, your book, events, podcasts, and all the other projects that you are involved in? I know. <laughs> when, when <laughs> You're a busy man. <laughs> when you said that, I'm like, how do I sleep? I was actually thinking. <laughs> um, the easiest thing is the cashflowdiarypodcast.com. Cashflowdiarypodcast.com. One more time, cashflowdiarypodcast.com. It's going to take you straight over to the podcast, uh, obviously, uh, at Cashflow Diary. Dot com, you'll find the other resources. Now, guys, understand, we've got loads and loads and loads of complimentary materials, and they will help you. They are designed to help you. But if you are serious and you are ready and you really, really, really want to make something happen, 
then go to cashflowdiary.com forward slash rock solid. Cashflowdiary.com forward slash rock solid. It's going to give you a case study inside there uh, because I had one guy. Uh, so uh, no one's broken his record yet where he's done 24 units in 12 months. So 24. So wow. we're talking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 24 units, 12 <laughs> months. So we're looking for the person who's going to break that record. If that's you, that's great. Again, cashflowdiary.com uh, forward slash rock solid. Jay, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your amazing story and providing so much value to my audience. And thank you for all you do to make this world a better place. Awesome. Thanks, man. Thank you so much for joining me and my guest, Jay Massey, today. Please remember to support our sponsors, Audible. Download any audiobook for free when you try Audible for 30 days. You can grab your free trial and audiobook download at cashflowninja.com forward slash free book download and thrive15.com. Thrive15.com provides 15-minute lessons on every aspect of business from marketing and branding to bookkeeping from world-class mentors. You can get a free month of access and learn new skills in just 15 minutes a day at thrive15.com forward slash cash flow. You can find all of our show notes and past podcast shows at cashflowninja.com and also subscribe to our community and mailing list by texting the word CASHFLOWNINJA, one word, all capitalized, to 44222, that's two fours and three twos. Community members on our mailing list will get weekly shows sent directly to their inbox along with other valuable resources and information. That's our show for today, guys. Until next time, live a life of passion and purpose on your terms. You have been listening to the Cash Flow Ninja with your host, MC Laubscher, the podcast empowering and inspiring people to discover how to generate their own income and manage, grow, and protect their own wealth in the new economy. Today's show notes and resources are available on our website, CashflowNinja.com. This presentation is for educational and informational purposes only. The information being presented and considered does not consider your particular financial objectives or situation, and it does not make personalized recommendations. This material is not intended to replace the advice of a qualified tax and legal advisor or other qualified professionals, and you should not use the information in place of a customized consultation with a licensed professional regarding your specific personal financial objective, situation, and needs. We believe the information provided is reliable, but we do not guarantee its accuracy, timeliness, or completeness. 